Mm, there we are. And let's load. Uh, ah, okay, okay, okay. I'm, I'm, it's coming back to me every time at the beginning of the stream. I have to collect myself and remember where we left off. <laughs> hey, Chidori and Bea, how are you? Naruhodone. That was a slightly odd way to say it. I thought it didn't sound like she meant her memory was vague. Ooh, so now we're having some Georgian narration here. Nice. Oh, what does it mean when you use it, Chidorin? I am completely unfamiliar with the language, excuse me. <laughs> Please educate us. Watashita私がここへ勤め始めた時から、ベアトリーチェ様の話はすでにささやかれておりました。前に聞いたよ。上山内と呪われたりして、実際に事故にあった使用人もいるんでしょう。ええ。ただ、信じる信じないに個人差があったのは
僕はその意味において結婚と同じものだと考えてる本当なら僕は今すぐにでも君をめとって家へ連れ帰りたいでも僕は今修行中の身でまだまだ自らの城を築き上げる力量がないだからこそ一人前になって初めて胸を張って君を連れ帰りたいんだそれは遠い未来の話じゃないほんの三年ほどを待ってほしいというだけの話なんだ How is this so、different? でも僕はだからといって3年間自分の気持ちを偽っていたくないだから婚約指輪を送ろうと決めたんだ、ah, okay, okay. So gonna... okay. それは男として情けない理由かもしれない妻と仕事を両立できないから待ってほしいなんて理由での婚約なんて情けないものかもしれないでも僕は決して気にをうんうん、<笑>ありがとうございますジョージさんにとって婚約指輪が恋人に贈るプレゼントの一つではないということがありましたそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそう婚約指輪はただのアクセサリーじゃない尊い約束を指輪の形で残す恋人たちの先生なんだ<笑>だとするとすぐにも結婚するなら不要なものということになりますよねそその時は婚約指輪じゃない結婚指輪として渡すよどちらにせよ君に指輪を贈ることに変わりはないのさこの女は俺のものだから誰も手を出すなよっていう売約札みたいなものですね<笑>んいやそのそんな意味じゃ<咳><笑>ジョージ knew about his shameful character when he had fallen for Shannon、uh, and sworn to become an excellent man he had sworn to part ways with that shame shameful part of himself oh man my My mic arm is kind of in the way of the text. There you go, man. That's a bit better. <laughs> so he chose to answer a little roughly on purpose, believing that Shannon would find it reassuring. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Sono tori kamo shire nai. Sayo. Kimi o boku no tsuma ni suru. Hoka no dare ni mo yara nai. Boku dake no mono ni suru. だから誰も手を出すなそういう指輪だよ間違いないありがとうございますジョージさん本当に嬉しいです Then George さん If it was decided by fate that this engagement ring that this promise would not be fulfilled would you still give it to me? Shannon was about to ask that but she swallowed her words Because George had already spoken the answer. George had said it. He had said that to him an engagement ring was infinitely similar to a wedding ring. Therefore, accepting George's ring had a far more sacred significance than a promise to marry. That's why I said that I was going to be a good man. I'm going to be a good man. I'm going to be a good man. いいのでしょうか神様の祝福もなく私たちが結ばれたことをその勝手に宣言してもいいのでしょうかうん神様も父さんも母さんも全て事後報告で十分さ僕たちが二人は結ばれたと一方的に宣言するそれは誰にも覆せないジョージさん僕は一時の感情で言ってるんじゃない今だけの君を見て言ってるんじゃない明日の君も明後日の君もそれこそ未来の老後の君すらも見据えて言っている<笑>いつもジョージさんが話していることですよね元気な子供や孫たちに囲まれて
ゆっくりとした老後を過ごしたいってうんその時僕の隣には年老いた君がいるそれを僕は予告いや予言するようん必ずその日は訪れるから必ず訪れますか信じてもいいですかうん必ず絶対それを言葉でない形で証明するのがこの指輪なんだよ見せてくださいえあっああ,あこあこ,これさジョージ thinking he was being told to show her the ring hurriedly took out the ring box even though he had practiced so much he hadn't been able to look cool but Shannon wasn't looking at that Oh, that's so sweet. She's so pretty. Oh, uh, sorry. Oh, I skipped the line. <laughs> My bad. With a straight and direct gaze, with faint tears and a smile. She was staring right at George's eyes. No, into something she could see beyond his eyes. I can see the future. I can see the future. I can see the future. 必ず約束する老後までじゃない死んだ後も僕らは魂になってもずっとずっと一緒にいるシャロン wiped away her tears and took the ring box inside was a diamond ring more than worthy of blessing the two of them George said the line that he had practiced over and over again inside his head その指輪を好きな指にはめてそれを返事にしてほしいんだ。Hey, Bancho, I wonder what spirit Eva would say about that. <笑>えっと、つまり明日の朝までに。Probably nothing good. <笑>ああ、そうキュー。シャノン smiled, took the ring. And with a completely natural movement, put it on the ring finger of her left hand. It really had looked like a very, very natural movement, and for a while, George was stunned. There was no blessing from God, no pastor to witness, nothing. But the two to be married had proclaimed it. Well, that's the most important part. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, I can think of a few best girls who are, who are in, indeed maids. Two souls were joined here today. I don't know. I really liked the way this went in the first episode so much better. Like, there was a sense of. <laughs> there was a sense of, of weight. To the moment, there was this idea that, like,、um, George was coming from a place like, I'm not rushing, I'm sure of what I'm doing, I will figure everything out, even you know, if it, he's not already in a position that's best suited to take on a wife or whatever, and he still needs to, things to, he still needs to finish through his training or whatever he needs to do. Like, for, for some things in life, you will never be fully prepared, right? You just have to, like, just. Go for it and then figure it out along the way. I totally respect that. And also, Shannon didn't immediately react to it. She again took in the weight of, of, of everything and then made a choice. And sure, it was tragic that the next day she was fucking dead.、Um, and the only way George got her answer was by looking at her corpse, which is traumatizing.、Um, but still, there, there was something there that is very much missing here, and I cannot really put a 
finger on it and describe it in just a word. But it irks me. This is like this time we don't have to wait to look at her corpse to see her answer. Yeah. All right, there's six more confessions. <laughs> God. <laughs> okay. So far, I like the first one. So, かな。かくのくせに。かくの。くせに。私、彼女じゃないよ。もう。嘘だ。どうして自分を騙すんだよ。人間になんか絶対になれないって知ってるくせに。黄金教へ行かなきゃ人間になれないって知ってるくせに。
everything is good. It's really cutting through my heart. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it seemed that Kanon was still speaking of his regrets, but by now it was all jumbled up in his crying voice. <laughs> I don't think she did. I think they're your own feelings. I don't If only I wouldn't open my eyes, I wouldn't see that the sky is blue. Does that... Will, will that stop the sky from being blue? No. Oh, oh bless him. Oh. This is even sadder when you know what's going on. Oh god. I... Knowing love isn't a lingering attachment that ties you to life. It is the place we should reach on our journey through life. Oh. <laughs> さて、さて。これにて全てのコマの条件は同じよ。コマは18。13人が生贄に捧げられる。生き残る5人は誰か。それとも誰かがこの儀式を打ち壊して見せるか。She is in the dress. Does this mean this is not the player character? Is it the meta character? I'm confused. 誰がどうやって? これはチェスプロブレムではない。対等なゲームだ。わらわだけが一方的に詰めるわけではない。ソナタはわらわの爪から懸命に逃れ続け、引き分け無効試合に持ち込むことができる。まあせいぜいソナタにできるのはそれを
異論はない私と夏日は認める<笑>信じられないし信じたくないけれどそれが現実なのね夏日言葉を少し選びなさい彼女は当家の最高の賓客なのだわわしらも認めるグーの音も出えへんへえ認めるわ一遍の文句もないまさか本当に<笑>素直にあなたに尊敬の念を覚えるわ私もよすごいわ純粋に尊敬する What the fuck happened? <笑>だから認めざるを得ないわ俺も認めるぜいまだに信じられねえ。Okay. What does say about だが this? Is she there? どうしようね悪魔を証明しちまったあんたの勝ちだ<笑>悪魔の証明はそなたが好む証明不能への便利な言い訳だったがあだになったようだないじめるなよ魔女様俺はもうあんたを認めてるぜ降参だ<笑> Yes, I wanna, I wanna know what Kiria says <笑>キリエ<笑>まだ異論があるかわらわは全員一致しか好まぬお前一人がわらわの存在を認めぬならば As the witch left boldly, the siblings started to panic. They were afraid of displeasing the witch. Kiria lightly closed her eyes and, after keeping silent for a while, opened her mouth. <sighs> only Kiria had faced the witch with stern eyes until the end. However, she had only been able to resist acknowledging the truth for a short time. The reality, the being that was before her eyes, couldn't be denied. Devils had already been proven. I will admit it. You are Beatrice, a legendary witch, and a legendary witch. I will not admit it as a legendary witch. Kiria is like the battler of the adults. <laughs> but, like, in that situation, I, I totally understand. Because there's like pressure from the others. Because if she doesn't believe, then whatever. Ugh. I'm pretty sure in her heart of hearts, she still harbors some doubts there. She just wasn't in a position to express them freely. Best girl material. <laughs> Why isn't she a maid? Ay, ay, ay. I'm stressed beyond belief. I don't know why. Just... Is this another one of those like we're shown every character and then the, the night passes and it's the next day and something terrible has happened? Oh god, I think that's what it is. I don't like E. Mm mm.
Also, what was that that place they were in? It looked like a chapel in some ways, but it had a table at the end of it, but it still seemed to have like a religious figure on the stained glass. I don't... Have we seen that before? I, I feel like I have no idea what was happening. Poof! Oh, bear. <laughs> Yeah, there it is. It's six in the morning. Okay. It's the house of God. Okay. <sighs> what was the sound that always filled the ears? The sound of the rain, the sound of a waterfall, or was it radio static? In that case, I wanted to be the sound of blood flowing through the body. I wanted to be the sound of the blood circulating throughout my body, telling me that I am still alive. The light entering through a crack in the curtain was faint, but it at least told him that dawn had broken. Kinzo was still in the same pose he had when he awoke. Still sitting in his chair and looking up at the ceiling, felt the blood slowly travel throughout his body. Oh my god, that must have been so uncomfortable, especially for someone his age. He must be so stiff and crickety cracky right now. Oh lord. Uh, judging by the clock, it was early morning, six on the dot. No matter how tired he was, no matter how deeply he slept, he woke up at exactly this time as though he had measured it with an hourglass. He didn't think that something like this was worthy of boasting of, but he told himself that while he could still do something like this, he was still in robust health. That is true. I forced myself to get up in the morning at 7, I can't imagine at 6. Oh. Yeah. ルーレットの目が幸運だったのか、我が努力の賜物なのか、区別のつかぬところが何とも was very slightly driven by a temptation to look at the other side of the stu study door, because he thought that maybe he might find the traces of a vain struggle to break the door made by something trying to select him as one of the first six sacrifices. <laughs> oh, man. ]人間とは安っぽい生き物だな。人事を尽くして天命を待ちながら幸運を得られた時にはそれが単なる幸運ではなく己の技量によるものだったと埋もれたくもなる。so he wanted to check whether there was a wretched mark on the door. That is only human. Therefore, Kinzo did not check. Good boy. He repressed the things that he wanted to do because he was human. By that, Kinzo could immerse himself in a feeling of sufficiency, as though he had become a being that surpassed humans. He became aware of human desire and forbade it. Things that a human wanted to do, he resisted. This eccentric and rebellious sense had surely given him a rare genius, which must have allowed him to succeed in his exploits as he re revived the Ushiromiya family in one generation. Sati, Beatrice, Omae ga totta mutsu no koma wa nan na no ka? Soshite, tsugi naru te wa dou kuru no ka? Tanoshimase te morau zo. <laughs> the servants woke early. They had to open the curtains, prepare breakfast, and complete various other tasks to welcome the guests to a new day. Who exactly does it mean by the servants? Goda was the most enthusiastic. Alright. He had been told to concentrate his efforts in particular on his work as a chef, 
for the duration of the family conference, and he had been specially exempted from several tasks that servants normally must do. It seemed that Goda, who was a show-off, had a particular feeling of supremacy about that. He left the preparations of the inside of the mansion to Genji and the rest, and worked on preparing breakfast in the kitchen. Genji split the work with Shannon and Kanon, and they carried out various tasks. There's been a mistake, Goda is alive! <laughs> I guess we get to see a bit more of him this time around, it's only fair. Shannon is alive too, okay. Shannon headed to the dining hall and knocked. Last year, the family conference had continued into the small hours of the night. It wouldn't have been odd for this year's conference to continue all the way into the next morning. So she had knocked out of consideration for the possibility that they were still having a discussion inside. But there was no response, so she opened the door and said good morning. Oh god. I'm scared of what lies behind every single door. <laughs> Uh, the door, uh, sorry, the room was cold, and it seemed that the conference had ended a long time before. On top of the table, there was a tea set from which they had probably been drinking, arranged in a way that would make it easy to clean them up. Cleaning away the tea was a servant's job, so if the family was too caring and cleaned it up themselves, the servants would lose face. Therefore, just doing this much for the servants truly was a pleasing act of kindness. That's so nice! As she approached the table to clean it away, she noticed that something like a memo had been left along with the cups. It had been placed together with the tea set, so naturally thinking it was a memo for the servant cleaning up, Shannon took it. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. Written on it was not a request, nor thanks for preparing the tea, but just a single word. Shannon looked at it blankly and read it out loud. <laughs> chapel. Okay, so they were in the chapel. Alright. A small sound kept repeating over and over. It was a sound that would ordinarily have been trivial and insignificant. I hope I stop hearing it soon, then I could return to my doze, someone thought vaguely. But no matter how much time passed, the sound did not end. It repeated over and over. Ah, shut up. <laughs> Who is that? Banging on the door constantly. As soon as she realized this, she woke up. Someone was knocking. Then she noted that there wasn't just a knock, but a voice, too. Rosa-sama. Rosa-sama. Ohayou gozaimasu. So Genji's there, and Rosa's there. Mm -hmm. Ma it had been Genji's voice. Looking at the clock, it was still before seven. It was clearly too early to wake the guests. Did something happen that was bad enough to cause this? She felt her sleepiness increasingly fade, thanks to this ominous premonition. Because Genji had been a familiar servant to Rosa since her childhood days, she opened the door a crack and answered, even though she was slightly defenseless in her pajamas. おはようございます。早朝から申し訳ございません。何かあったの? <laughs> Genji spoke into Rosa's ear and told her something in a small voice. It seemed that Rosa couldn't understand what she was being told after only hearing it once. And after repeating the words back to him several times, she finally realized that apparently something strange had happened. Rosa closed her door for a second and after changing her clothes, she immediately accompanied Genji and they headed to the mansion. Defenseless has been ruined since Fate's Day night. Uh, refresh my memory, what do you mean? <laughs> If it's something that I managed to read. The chapel required some explanation. Thank you. It wasn't in the mansion, but in a grove behind the mansion, which could be reached after a short walk. I don't want to know. Okay. <laughs> ah, okay. Alright. Alright. Uh, but in a grove behind the mansion, which could be reached after a short walk. It had been built at the same time that the mansion had been constructed on Rokenjima, 
So while its outside walls had been repaired many times, making it look new from the outside, it was a very old building. <laughs> ah, Rosa and Genji dashed through the rain together. I love the reactions in, the, in chat. Angard, yes. Um, just like the previous night, the rain was falling in er earnest. Ay, ay, ay. Eventually, they began to see the chapel beyond the sparse grove. If all she knew of it was its appearance from the outside, it might have felt like a place of dazzling beauty where a pair of young lovers might want to hold a ceremony. However, it seemed that in Kinzo's eyes, it was a very sacred place and Rosa and her siblings had been harshly told not to approach it unnecessarily. And yet everybody was there the night before acknowledging Beatrice and they all had gone from the mansion to the chapel then back to the mansion through the rain? Um, okay, I, it's not piecing together for me, but okay. So even at this age, and no matter what the reason for it, she felt some guilt in approaching the chapel, and was gripped by the fear that this would surely make her father so angry, she he would slap her across the face. Okay. The servant's silhouettes could be seen in front of the entrance to the chapel. Goda, Shannon, and Kanon, which meant that all of the servants on the morning shift had gathered. A short while ago, Rosa had been told the nature of this situation verbally by Genji. However, without laying eyes on it directly, she hadn't been able to understand. Probably all of the servants gathered there were the same. Without seeing it with their own eyes, they couldn't understand what was going on. Because on the door that was the entrance to the chapel, drawn very large, the creepy sticky paint-like substance that made one think of blood, was something like a creepy magic circle. Dun dun. The servants looked at each other. I am not liking the absence of Natsuhi so far, and the fact that Genji had to go and fetch Rosa, which is a guest for, for this. I'm not liking where this is going. Goda was the first to open his mouth. <laughs> Shannon held out the memo with a shaking hand. Canon was pointing at a single line of English written below the creepy magic circle. Until it had been pointed out to her, she had thought it was just another part of the magic circle and hadn't noticed it. Written there in English were the words Happy Halloween for Maria. Happy Halloween for Maria. A wish for an enjoyable Halloween for Maria. A creepy magic circle. Romantic. Happy Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> the only person who said the words Happy Halloween to Maria yesterday. The symbols matched. The golden witch, Patricia. Maria did it. Case closed. Oh god. Maria? That girl. The girl who was sleeping with you. Confirm it. もう仕訳ございません。マリア様のお名前が書かれていたことには今気づきましたもので、まだ確認しておりません。至急。何やってんのよ。私はマリアの様子を見てきます。それからクラウス兄さんたちにも知らせて。以後の対応の指示を受け
In an abnormal situation like this, why had she been the only one called when the other siblings hadn't? Right? Especially the heads of the house. Kraus and Natsuhi. Right? Right? I don't fucking care about Kraus, but I'm not liking this. Even if Maria's name had popped up. あ、はい。旦那様にご連絡申し上げようとしたのですが、お姿が見当たらず。奥様もお部屋におられません。シーツの様子からすると、指輪ベッドに戻られていないのかもしれません。Rosa <sighs> felt something creepy crawling slowly up her back. で、廃道の中を確認した。いえ、まだです。確認しようとしたのですが。実は礼拝堂の鍵は特別で、マスターキーに対応しておりません。一本だけある鍵でしか開けられないのですが、その鍵がキーボックスから紛失しているのです。She didn't want to get any closer to the door with the creepy magic circle if she could help it. Rosa readied herself and approached and tried pushing and pulling the knob. All she felt was the resistance of the sturdy lock. <笑>そんな許可。私に出せるわけがないわ。お父様の大切な礼拝堂なのよ。そんなことできないわよ。Then the events of the previous day swirled around in the back of Rosa's mind. That's right, when I met that witch in the Rose Garden, didn't she hand Maria an envelope? Yes, I'm positive she did. When Maria had tried to open it, that witch had told her not to do that yet, and then she had definitely said, the time will come soon to open it. Rosa became convinced. There could be no doubt. That letter which had been handed to Maria. After dashing back to the guest house, Rosa approached the cousin's room while hiding her footsteps, softly opened the door and peered inside. From the inside, she could hear the healthy snores of young people. The four children were all there. Maria was there, sleeping soundly. After heaving a sigh of relief, she entered the room with quiet footsteps. She was after Maria's handbag, which was resting on the sofa. Maria always liked walking around with her treasures. She was probably imitating how her mother always carried her makeup with her. Of course, she was just copying her, so on the inside it was full of junk. I mean, it's junk to you, but it's a treasure to her. In Maria's case, it was full of small, creepy, occult-like items and a notebook with things like that written in it. Rosa hadn't once been happy to see her daughter walking around with those kinds of ungirlish things. However, after she had tried to force Maria to stop, they had gotten into a big fight and she had decided to let be. A western envelope with the crest of the gold eagle. When she took it out, she could tell that there was a heavy cylindrical object inside. She could tell by its feel and its weight. There was no doubt. This was a key. After turning around and checking that Maria was still sound asleep, Rosa tore open the envelope and tipped out the contents into her palm. It was a key with an old and intricate design. Rosa grasped that key and dashed out. It seemed that Butler noticed those sounds, but after grumbling and turning over in his sleep, he started snoring again. Genji-san,この鍵、ひょっとして礼拝堂の鍵ということは？これをどこで？はい、これが礼拝堂の鍵です。Rosa approached the creepy magic circle once again and put the key in the keyhole. There was a strong resistance, 
After it resisted for a short while, it stopped that resistance with a clunk. Then squeaking with a noise that hurt one's ears, it slowly, slowly began to open. Her voice reverberated throughout the massive room. Of course there was no answer. The chapel had a high ceiling and the air was cold. And even on this rainy, unsettling day, for some reason, it felt sacred. Yeah, I wanted to know. <laughs> Can you blame me? It's like, here's an envelope. It's, you know, top secret until later. I want to know what's in the envelope. Of course. Didn't you want to know what was in the envelope when you first read it? The servants timidly followed after Rosa. Rosa -sama. Ario. I don't notice it immediately and pointed. Over there was the altar. In the place where a, normally a pastor would preach of God's love, there was a table that shouldn't have been there. Yeah, that's that's exactly what confused me. Like, what is a table doing there? At first, it looked like a dining table. And there actually were gorgeous plates and utensils set on the table, enough to make you think it was a child's birthday party or something. Upon closer inspection, the surrounding area had been decorated with pumpkins and black and orange ribbons. They were probably Halloween decorations. And there were people seated at the table. That is so creepy. That is so much creepier than last time. Fuck. Three people on each side facing each other, seated in chairs. They could be recognized at a glance. Kraus and his wife Eva and her husband and Rudolf and his wife. But if you were asked if these were definitely them, you'd still have to go even closer to check. Because they seemed almost like dolls. Gee, I wonder why. Rosa and the rest had opened the door, entered all at once with the sound of many footsteps and called out asking if anyone was there. And yet, there had been no reaction. Even assuming they had chosen to ignore them, normally you'd expect there to be some kind of reaction. And there hadn't been even that. So at first it felt like some someone had set down some dolls that looked a lot like them. Right now, it wasn't just Rosa. Yeah, definitely they're sleeping, Bancho. <laughs> oh my god. Shannon and Kanon and even Goda. They were all fighting f frantically against the rising creepy emotion, tightly gr grasping their hearts. Nisa! Esa! As she climbed up to the altar, she called out again, but still the others gave no reaction. Yes, by now Rosa had accepted it. They were not dolls. She had accepted that they were those very people. <laughs> they approached close enough to be able to see clearly what was on the table. Just like their first impression, it looked like a lovely banquet, reminiscent of a child's birthday party. Plates piled up with sweets, glasses with lovely drinks. Several ornaments in the shape of pumpkins. They were all decorated in a Halloween style, and while it might have been an irrelevant thought at a time like this, she thought that this would surely make Maria happy if she could see it. They were seated in front of the table, and it looked like they were sleeping. It was an eerie scene, as though a small, fun-looking Halloween party had been stopped in time. <laughs> <laughs> you think? When she approached even closer to them, she realized that the candies were scattered all over the floor. There were candies in very fancy wrapping, cookies, fizzy lemon sweets, chocolates. And they were all distributed across the carpet, which was covered with blackberry and cranberry jam? Jam, really? <laughs> <laughs> Ah! 
Rosa and the rest finally realized what the situation was. It was a Halloween party. A banquet for those not of this world. Kraus, Natsuhi, Eva, Hideyoshi, Rudolf and Kirie. Six people in all were seated in the chairs, dead as though they were sleeping. How could you tell that they were dead and not sleepy, simply sleeping? That was because they were. From their chests, their stomachs, vertically sliced open. Wait. Beautiful image. Thank you. Nante. <laughs> The six of them were seated at a Halloween party. All of them killed with their stomachs sliced open. Was the gem that covered the floor something that they couldn't finish eating, which was which had overflowed out of their stomachs? Come on, what is this? Who, who would think this? Come on, come on. No. The contents of their stomachs had been splattered all across the floor. Great. I think I preferred the bashed in heads, to be honest. And that wasn't all. From their stomachs, almost as though, almost as though, as though they had spilled out S sweets. Candies and cookies, fizzy lemon sweets, and chocolates had spilled out, stained with blood, and had scattered across the floor. Mm -hmm. What could have happened to cause this? It was almost as though the insides of their stomachs had been stuffed full with sweets, and when their stomachs had been cut, it had all flowed out. Uh, they are just under the weather. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> That's exactly it. Rosa remembered a gross, gross-out meal, a turkey that had been served at her own birthday when she was a young girl. When she had put a knife in from the inside, her very favorite, but because no one had told her about it at all. Bright red, bright red ketchup omelette rice had poured out like blood-stained maggots. Dripping, slimy, pulpy, sticky. Okay, there it is. This this is what what Bea was referencing almost. <laughs> Those are the secret corpses that will come handily. <laughs> The trauma of her youth was revived. Rosa felt a monster raging inside her stomach as the acid started to rise up. Unable to hold back, she threw up on the floor. Dang. Thank you for the image. Great. Her empty stomach couldn't throw up anything but stomach acid. The scene in front of her was no longer a fun Halloween party by any means. The three couples had been placed there with their stomachs vertically wrenched open, wrenched open with the Whatever that is, <laughs> yeah. Lots and lots of sweets had been stuffed in there, pulpy. I yeah. That. <laughs> Do you want me to try to read that? <laughs> I'm not good at it. Blood and guts and sweets were overflowing onto the floor. Blood stained, sticky, sticky, sloppy, pulpy, sweet candy stuck to each finger, gummy, gummy. Ah, uh, but it's stained with their entrails, sloppy, pulpy. What was that I stepped on just now? That didn't feel like a candy or a cookie or a fizzy lemon sweet or a chocolate. Okay, we get the idea. Can can we move on? Oh, I'm so scared I can't even look at the bottom of my foot to see what I stepped on. <sighs> what what a gruesome Halloween party. From far away it looked really beautiful, fantastical and fun. And when you see it up close it's really terrible, disgusting and yet still somehow beautiful. Rosa's wild thoughts tried as best they could to escape her throat with a loud voice that was neither a scream nor a roar. It 
If a word tied to reality like police hadn't come out of Goda's mouth, Rosa and the rest would probably still have been unable to escape this nightmarish party. But that wasn't because they thought that the police might be able to do something. If they didn't say police, police out loud, it felt like another seat would be set up at this demon's party and given to them. It felt like their own stomachs were getting uncomfortably filled from the inside. Rumbling, churning, it was surely because candy was starting to overflow from their stomachs. Rosa was again tortured by a desire to vomit and threw up her stomach acid on the floor. And then she searched to see whether there was any candy mixed in. I... I... Rosa coughed violently again and violently sped up the stomach acid that burned her throat onto the floor. She realized that by now her whole body had become covered in filthy sweat. Have Nanjo come here and what? It's too late for medical care. The servants accepted their orders and dashed outside. After watching them leave, Rosa once again fixed the cast her eyes upon her siblings who had been through life's joys and sorrows with her and their partners. Even though there could be nothing more tragic, for some reason their fantastical deaths tempted her to describe them as beautiful. いいねえな。どこに行っちまったんだろうな。潮に<笑> help it's too late. I don't think there would have ever been like soon or right time for medical help in that situation. <笑><笑> oh my god, no, that's such a <laughs> oh, was... yeah, okay. <laughs> It is like a, a, we call it like an an old lady's um, medicine or something like that. Have the profiles changed? I had not checked. Maybe. Yeah, there they are. They're all red. Yeah. Kraus' corpse found inside the chapel. The direct cause of death is unknown, but it seems his stomach was cut open and his intestines were pulled out after his death. Additionally, sweets and candies were packed into his stomach. Welcome, Maria. Happy Halloween. Corpse found inside the chapel. Blah, blah, blah. That's the same. And just the last part is different. See, didn't I tell you bellies are full of candy? Okay, forever everyone has a belly that's filled with sweet dreams. And for Hideyoshi, a belly could never be full of disgusting things. Uh, for Rudolf, that's why we want to be simple and sweet, like candy. And for Kirie, so this dreamland is for you. Happy Halloween. Just put that plant on it. Yeah, it's like, how do you even find the word? Is like Google Translate that verse and like <laughs> translating it? Interesting, interesting. Uh, 
<sighs> Wait, I think I'm. Am I not? Yeah, I'm now I'm focused. 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 Happy Oh, bear. Why did the tube of 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 and so they had started wondering whether Rosa might have come and opened it. Ogonomajosamanofutoka she hadn't let anyone touch it, but yesterday Maria had bragged a lot about the envelope to Battler and the rest. So they remembered it well. Mama, 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 the refreshing morning atmosphere had been completely wiped out by the occasional sounds of thunder. It was only natural. Since the time they had woken up, they hadn't met anyone other than themselves. It felt like the mansion had become an empty husk, leaving only them behind. After Jessica called out into the hallway, an answer finally came back. It was from the entrance hall. Kikoyemastomo! <laughs> It was only natural. Nanjo was a guest like the rest of them. He had just now come to pass the time in the parlor until breakfast. Maria buried her face in Nanjo's well-built stomach. <laughs> I like that. Well-built stomach. Sobbing and crying. Nanjo could do nothing but be bewildered at what was going on so early in the morning. <laughs> oh, that is cute. It's like a bear hug. <laughs> From down the hall, they could sense people running hurriedly. When they looked, they saw that it was Goda and Kanon. Running inside the mansion should have been immodest for a servant, and yet Battler and the rest didn't even think to question that now. Maria's sobbing had become so unmanageable, they wanted to ask someone, anyone, where Rosa was. But the two servants ignored Jessica as she waved her hand. Goda flew into the servant room, and Kanon, noticing that Nanjo was here, bowed and approached him at a quick pace and whispered something into his ear. Can you imagine all the sweat and tears Nanjo put into building that someone can do the noise? I'm sorry, I can't not laugh. Uh, into the glorious monument it is today. なんですってロザさんがはいご案内いたしますのでどうかご同行お願いいたしますわかりましたこちらへ Without saying anything more than that, Kanon finally noticed Jessica and bowed to her. But he wasn't calm. 
He dashed back down the corridor by which he had come, followed by Nanjo. By looking at how hurried they were, Butler and the rest realized that something bad really had happened. They saw Goda through the door to the servant room, which had been flung open. He had the telephone receiver in hand and was violently pressing the hook. From that they realized that he was trying to call a hospital or the police. Or in any event, he was trying to call someone because a serious emergency had occurred. Mm. They didn't know what, but something was happening. Butler and the rest chased after Kano and Nanjo. Ah, and then we realized. Kano kun had called Dr. Nanjo, but he hadn't called us. So we should never have followed. I wonder if Alice didn't regret her excess curiosity when she chased after the rabbit holding a clock. Okay, we have Jessica screaming a second time, okay. なんだよ、こりゃ。趣味が悪いにも程があるじゃねえかよ。命を奪うなら、それで十分断りただろうがよ。なんだよ、こりゃ。わざわざ殺した後に椅子に座らせて腹裂いて。歌詞をわざわざ
and it's very ex expressive when it comes to portraying eyes. I I, I, I don't know. There's something that I, it it goes well with his intensity in this moment. I like that. Zenkai no game. Oh wow, bear's face. Jesus. <laughs> oh, I mean bear teacher. お前は自分の親の死に顔が見られないと嘆いたな。どこの残したぞ。しっかり残した。よく拝んでおけ。間違いなく父親たちが殺されたことを。そうかよ。そいつはサービス満点だぜ。気に入った。俺は手名の息の根を止めたら顔面耕してやろうと誓ってたがそいつは取り消してやるぜ感情に任せて思考を止めるなすでにわらわのゲームは始まっておるのだぞわらわは今回は綺麗に死体を残すことに決めたいや
ノーザ様戻りました合田さん警察はどうでしたか多様の指示はいつ頃来られそうだと言っていましたかそれが電話が故障のようでして非常用の無線機も試しては見たのですがその天候のせいでしょうかこちらも通じず何ですってじゃあ警察に連絡がつかないということなのあいつだあいつが電話線とかに採掘して警察に電話ができないようにしたんだ When she heard that the telephone phones were out of order, Jessica immediately decided that it was the work of that mysterious guest. Her eyes were bright red after so much crying, and they began to grow even more red with rage. ちくしょうちくしょうちくしょうジェシカちゃんお待ちなさいゴーダさんカノ君行ってははいお嬢様お待ちを Covering her unfocused sadness with anger, Jessica ran outside, torn apart by emotion. Thinking about it hastily, maybe the mystery guest b a t i c h e who had arrived yesterday was suspicious. However, at the current time, there was absolutely no proof that she was the culprit. At this moment, she was nothing more than a simple guest and only one of many. So Rosa had to make an adult decision and stop Jessica in her hasty rampage. Gora and Kanon realized that immediately and chased after her. Dare ni mo mane kare na katta kyakujin. Beatrice ga han nin nan daro ka. Jessica no kimochi mo wa akare. So, omoi komi tai kimochi wa. 誰でもいいから犯人ってことにして横っ面をぶっ飛ばしてやりたい気持ちがあるだがその前にはっきりと理解する必要があるベアトリーチェってのは何者なんだ俺は顔すら見てねえぜ<笑>顔ならお屋敷に大きな肖像画で飾られてたよあれだけ見てまだ覚えられないのかな<笑>なんだよマリアこんな状況で何がおかしいよベアトリーチェは魔女なんだよそして黄金鏡の扉を開くための儀式がいよいよ始まったのこの6人はそのいけにえなんだよ<笑>さあさあ始まるよ魔女の宴が。今宵はハロウィン魔女たちが今こそ祝い集う<笑>ちょマリアその気持ち悪い声で笑うのをやめなさいっていつも言ってるでしょ The crisp sound of Rosa slapping Maria's cheek echoed through the high ceiling chapel Ah,、uh, there we go again It kind of feels like ever since the rain started yesterday, no, ever since the island had become wrapped up in the typhoon, something has gone crazy. I had arrived in Rokenjima while it was clear and taken a nap because I had gotten up early. When I woke up, it had already started raining. And after I got up, that's when it all started. Suddenly, a mysterious visitor had arrived, calling herself the Golden Witch b a t r i c e and it feels like the world had started screwing. Bit by bit into something insane. What happened while I was taking that nap? During that time, had this island been cut off, trapped in a different world where common sense doesn't apply? Who is this person called Beatrice? Is she some unknown person trying to involve themselves with the inheritance problem like our parents were freaking out about at the dinner last night? Or is the culprit the witch from the legend of the gold, like Maria says? Even if Jessica hadn't let her short temper get the better of her in this situation, the visitor was probably the most suspicious. But we mustn't jump to conclusions just like that. Yeah, that's no good, no good, no goddamn good at all. I smacked my face with both hands again, cooling off my brain before it overheated, even though it might have been a waste of effort. This is... On a tray piled up with sweets that decorated the table, George Aniki found a western envelope which had the Ushiromiya family crest done on it in gold leaf. 
and it was unopened. てことは、それは俺たち宛てってことじゃねえのか。親父たちが読んだものだったなら、開封されてるはずだぜ。その推理は正解のようだよ。書いてある。残されし者たちへって、書いそれは、犯人が残した手紙なの。中身は兄貴開けようぜ After nodding silently, George Aniki opened it. A folded letter came out. よみよ、六軒島へようこそ。後宮家の皆様方、私は、金蔵様にお仕えしております。当家顧問錬金術師のベアトリーチェと申します。The letter really was a joke. This Beatrice, who called herself the family alchemist, had announced that she was collecting the gold she had lent grandfather along with the interest. And that interest was everything that grandfather had created. So this is basically the first letter. But didn't Rosa have this letter? Since this tragedy was right before our eyes as this paragraph was read aloud, it clearly wasn't referring just to the wealth that grandfather had built up. It was literal. Everything that grandfather had given birth to, in other words, all of grandfather's descendants, were included in the interest. ただし、隠された契約の黄金を暴いた者が現れた時、ベアトリーチェは、この権利をすべて永遠に放棄しなければならない。<笑>黄金の隠し場所については、すでに金蔵様が、私の肖像画の下に、碑文にて公示されております。つまり、こういうことだね。もしこの殺人が利子の回収行為だというならそれを止める条件としておじいさまに与えた隠し黄金を探し出してみろとこう言ってるんだよそしてその秘密は例の肖像画の碑文に隠されているとも言ってるつまりこいつは魔女様の挑戦状ってわけか黄金の隠し場所を記した暗号文を解けるものなら解いてみろと。そしてそれができなきゃ、利子の回収をこの後も着々と進めていきますと、ぶっ殺してやる。上等だバ、バトラ君、これ、これ !The table had been full of sweets, so even though they had been right in the open, we had assumed they were just sweets. I mean, come on, you find stuff like this a lot, right? You know, boxes of chocolate shaped like golden ingots. こりゃ、おかしのはこじゃねえぞ。本物だ。こりゃ、本物の金塊だ。肩欲の和紙の紋章が刻印されてる。前に母さんが話してたのを聞いたこれはおじいさまの黄金伝説の金塊だよ Gold ingots, three of them, weighing a full ten kilograms each, were piled up in the very center of the table. Alright, from one to three now, okay. It was where the cake would be placed if it was a birthday party. Meh. In other words, this was without a doubt the birthday cake of the party known as the Family Conference. これが本当に純度フォーナインのインゴットだったなら、六千万円くらいの価値はある。バカ野郎、安すぎ。俺たちの親が六人も殺されて、そこに積まれた黄金がたったの六千万円だと。
だから絶対にペアとの勝ち早く黄金鏡への扉を開いてそしてマリアを連れてって。Jessica and Canon, okay. I'm curious, but、um, I will kindly ask you to excuse me for two short minutes. I just need to use the toilet really quick. I'll be right back. There we are. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, I would also need a toilet break after something like that. Ay, 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 ay. Let me. Okay, I think it's alright. And we can proceed. Darega, Hanninka, Mada Wakarimasenzo. Soreni Beatrice Sama, Oyakata Sama no Taisets na Hinkakudesu. Dakara Nanda Tinda. <laughs> She's insisting on the grabbing by her collar, grabbing her by the collar. <laughs> Jessica never stopped moving. Goda and Kanon chased after her, doing their best to convince her, but Jessica never lent them an ear. Eventually, the witch's VIP room came into view. This VIP room was always sealed and never used. No matter what kind of guest came, Kinzo wouldn't let them in this room. And yet, the servants were always made to clean this room so that it could be used at any time. Yeah. So the servants had started、uh, calling this room the witch's VIP room after their other shapeless master. Jessica also knew about this.、Uh, sorry, knew this. And she couldn't stand that woman's arrogance in calling herself a witch by staying in that room. This was the most gruesome scene in the novel, so the worst has passed. Oh, okay. Okay. At least there's that. Some silver lining. The Golden Witch was just a fairy tale. Come on, a witch? To Jessica, she was nothing more or less than the murderer who had brutally killed her parents. I'm. I'm not really sure what to expect here because the whole point of replaying this, replaying in quotes,、um, is to prove to Battler that she exists and that she did commit those murders. So, wouldn't she just be like, oh yeah, I murdered them? Like, blatantly? Or why? How? Huh? How is this gonna play out? I. <laughs> okay. Question her. Make her give painful excuses. Make her spit at the ground painfully. Make her breathe painfully. No matter how hard she pretends to be a witch, I'll teach her that she's just a stinking, sweaty human. Jessica hit the door to the VIP room while yelling with all of her strength. 
It definitely wasn't a knock. That sound was the beating of her anger's hammer, whose message was clear. If the woman didn't open the door, she'd break it down. There was no answer. Jessica twisted the doorknob without any reservation, but she felt the resistance of the lock. Jessica turned to the two servants and spat out at them demandingly. Although Goda was flustered, he still tried to somehow calm Jessica's anger. After hanging his head silently for a while, Kanon pulled the master key from his jacket pocket. Jessica snatched the master key from Kanon's hand and violently shoved it into the keyhole. Immediately there was a light sound and she felt it unlock. And without excusing herself, she flung open the door. Jessica rudely barged into the room. The witch wasn't anywhere to be seen. Jessica, thinking that she might be hiding somewhere inside the room, peeked behind the curtains and under the bed, but she couldn't find anyone. However, there definitely were signs that the bed had been used. And although it's an odd way to say it, the atmosphere in the room had grown a little softer. It wasn't a hard atmosphere for a place normally devoid of people, like the chapel. You could definitely tell that someone had spent the night in this room. But she could not be seen. In reality, neither Jessica nor Goda had met Beatrice yet. They had only been told by those who had met her that she was the spitting image of the person in the portrait. So they were doubtful about what her face really looked like. However, Kanon alone had met her. And he understood what kind of being the witch was, and what kind of character she had. So he knew that if they were to force their way in here searching for her, she wouldn't let things go as they planned. She must be watching us bitterly flail about in vain from somewhere, sneering at us. She's that kind of person. Because he was looking at things that way. Kanon was the first to find it. The other two were concentrating on finding the shape of a person, so they hadn't noticed what there's another envelope? Ah, near a water jug on the side table, there was a single sheet of writing paper. It was accompanied by a short message in a fountain pen which had probably been used to write it. Okay, so it's not an envelope, it's just directly the letter. Kanon understood the witch. The witch would definitely ridicule them as they found the six corpus f corpses, forced their way in here in rage and were unable to find her. Ridicule has no meaning unless it is communicated. So in other words, this was definitely that. Jessica quickly dashed over and violently stole the piece of paper. She probably wasn't trying to be violent. She just couldn't control her strength now. As soon as she read the message, Jessica went into a wild rage, crumpled the paper up and threw it. Then she grabbed a table lamp that was by the side of the bed and violently swung it around, mercilessly hitting the walls and furniture with it. The light bulb shattered at once and scattered its shards across the room. Goda is surprisingly sensible in this situation. I don't dislike him. Right now. <laughs> like, he genuinely seems concerned and tries to take care of Jessica. So, I'll give him this was written on the paper. 
私がぬくぬくとここであなたが飛び込んでくるのを待ちぼうけるとでも知的な夜に粗暴なるあなたは似合わないこんな間抜けに育てた親はどんな顔うん見たよ本当にそっくりな間抜け面今はお菓子の国でお腹いっぱい It sounded like something that witch would write. It meant that she had predicted that one of the children who had lost their parents would come running in here. If she was hiding somewhere in this room, she would surely be rolling around with laughter. The witch was that kind of person. She sneered at people's misfortune, using it to stave off the boredom of a thousand years. <laughs> Goda grabbed the table lamp Jessica had been swinging around and took it from her. Because if she kept swinging it around, she might hit something and get injured. To Goda's eyes, Jessica probably looked mad with rage, burning with the flames of anger. But Kanon's eyes saw it differently. Those were probably. Tears of sadness hidden by rage, of course. Therefore, when at the moment the table lamp was taken from her, Jessica dropped to the floor almost as if groveling and started crying and scratching at the carpet, Goda was surprised, but Kanon was not. Her way of crying by brandishing her anger had been stolen from her, so this was inevitable. <laughs> Considering that she was a daughter of the Ushiromiya main family, she was in a very shabby state. Yeah, definitely when your parents get、uh, gruesomely murdered, the thing you should think of is that you're a daughter of a certain family and you need to carry yourself in a certain way. Uh huh, sure. No. She scratched at the carpet with her fingernails and even her feet writhed and scratched at it. Jessica cried very, very hard. Because if she didn't, her rage would start building up again and swallow her up. But over and over again, she remembered that letter's humiliating message. No, I don't think so. <laughs> What kind of faces must your parents have had after raising you to be such a hapless fool? <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I saw them. They had perfectly stupid faces, just like you. Now they are in Candyland with their bellies all full. As Jessica cried and screamed, she triggered an asthma attack. The servants watching over her ran up to her hurriedly and rubbed her back, but that only provoked Jessica's wrath. If she didn't want to be here, she didn't want to be found, she will definitely be in a place that is not that easy to find. So, where, where, where is that place? Where are you going to go? <laughs> oh, sorry. Jessica got up unsteadily, and as her asthma continued, she went out into the hallway. 
お嬢様お薬を支給南条先生をお呼びします郷田さん僕に任せてくれませんかキャノン had noticed Goda who was much older probably couldn't feel the tears in Jessica's heart キャノン who had noticed that himself had to support かカノンさんいいのですか今のお嬢様には涙を流す時間も必要なのだと思いますご両親のあんな死に方を目の当たりにしては<笑>そうですねゴダ also understood and he also knew of the modest relationship that Jessica and Kanon shared so he understood everything and left it to Kanon わかりました私はローザ様のところへ戻りますお嬢様をくれぐれもよろしくお願いしますよはいお任せをカノンズ voice was frail but he nodded forcefully After looking at his eyes, Goda also nodded forcefully. Ah, Goda was a veteran with many years behind him. He had seen a great number of people in his life. I, I bet he had never seen anything like this. So he knew of the vigorous sparkle that could be found in the eyes of those who had self control. He had seen that clearly in Kanon's eyes. Therefore, he would leave this to Kanon. Thinking about it, this may have been the first moment that Goda had trusted Kanon and relied on him for a job. It seemed Jessica was heading towards her room, leaning against the wall as she suffered from her asthma. Kanon followed after her wordlessly. If she had asked for a hand, he would have jumped over and supported her. But as long as Jessica didn't ask for that, he hid himself, watching over her from a distance where he could come to her rescue at any time. As Kanon remained in that spot where the 10 billion people, sorry, where 10 billion people would hope for someone else to be when their hearts felt like they would explode from sadness, he silently watched Jessica's back. Then finally, she was crouching in front of the door to her own room. The asthma attack had stolen all of her strength, and her thoughts had gotten hazy from the lack of oxygen so that she could no longer stand up. But right now, Jessica wasn't thinking that she wanted someone to lend a hand, because she still hadn't been able to overcome the flames of anger. Because even if someone had offered her a hand with good intentions, right now, Jessica would start wanting to grab it and lacerate it. And she understood how unreasonable that would be. Until she could overcome the flames of her anger, she definitely wouldn't ask for help. Probably Jessica no longer even had the willpower to call for help. But Kanon heard it. He definitely heard it. Kanon definitely heard that voiceless call for help, which is shared by those from across the world who are grieving, and which, though they scrim and scream, cannot be heard by anyone. Kanon softly knelt by Jessica's side and wordlessly offered her a shoulder. Even as Jessica kept coughing painfully, she accepted it, unlocked her room, and entered. <laughs> お薬をご用意します。Oh, Jessica had often said that when she let her asthma run its course, it hurt so badly that it felt like she would vomit her whole stomach. Her face was pale and her gaze wavered, and yet the coughing continued. Even so, her sadness was probably even stronger. After having her sit on the bed, Kanon took an inhaler from a cute basket on the side table by the bed and handed it to her. Jessica sometimes forgot to walk around with her medicine. When it seemed that this was the case, Kanon would take notice and secretly carry around the, the inhaler from the first aid kit in the servant room, but he had not done so today. He scolded himself as though wondering how, after failing to bring it with him on a day like this, he could call himself furniture. <laughs> Well, that's an interesting perspective. <laughs> Deciding that you're not proper furniture because you didn't do the thing in an exceptional situation where, like, everything was turned upside down. <laughs> oh, bless him. Then he remembered the day when he had spoken that word and somehow betrayed Jessica's feelings, which jarred Hanon's heart. But compared to Jessica's current sadness, he thought of that as a far more shameless emotion, and he suppressed it to the depths of his heart. <laughs> <laughs>
When she held her medicine, Jessica's wild breathing calmed down bit by bit, and she was finally able to regain her composure. But the strength and willpower she had lost wouldn't allow her to rise up from the bed. <laughs> Kanon regretted misspeaking. He had said, Are you alright? to her. Was he really unable to notice the pain in her heart? This was why he was ultimately mere furniture. This was why he couldn't become human. Kanon understood that she still needed some time to cry alone. He told her to call him at any time, bowed, and made to meet alone. <gasps> Jessica had spoken as though she wanted him to stop, so Kanon had stopped. If she asks it, I'll do anything to help her. If it could heal the pain in her heart right now, I would even become a cane or a chair. Shape-shifting furniture. <laughs> oh god, Kanon. <laughs> if by doing that I can repair the pain in her heart, I gave her that day. Ooh. For a while, Jessica stared into Kanon's eyes. As though despite stopping him, she had nothing to say. <gasps> For a while, neither spoke. Jessica broke that silence. With a small voice. ごめん。何でもないぜ。しばらく一人になりたいって。小沢おばさんに伝えてくれるかな。一人にはしません。あなたを僕は一人にしない。だから廊下にいます。<笑> For just an instant, it looked like some kind of hope flew to Jessica's eyes. But it was very faint and disappeared like the first snow does on the surface of the river. Karen bowed once again and closed the door. He thought he had said something to give her some courage. But for some reason it felt like that had actually hurt her. Why? He didn't know. Surely that was because he was furniture. <laughs> oh my god. So even now he couldn't grasp human sadness. As Kana repeatedly questioned himself, he walked down the corridor. He felt like the window at the end was coolly call him, calling to him. <laughs> It was still pouring outside. A dark, grey world. Even on days like this, Shannon would surely look at the ocean and know it was blue. But to my eyes, even if it cleared up, I would only see grey. As long as I cannot tell the blueness of the ocean, I am nothing but furniture imitating a person. <laughs> <laughs> there shouldn't have been a trace of anyone in this corridor. It had been empty and cold. But those scoffing words approached Kanon from behind. When he turned around, he saw that witch. That witch, who hadn't shown herself when Jessica had searched for her with the rage, bordering on madness, who had left that sneering letter to toy with her. Kizutsuke 
そして最後が一番難しく一番効果的に傷つけられる<笑>なのに意識せずして傷つけられるわかるかわ分かるわけもないし知りたくもない期待を裏切る女ほど夢見がちな生き物はいない勝手に夢を見勝手に傷つくお前のような距離の男が一番女を傷つけるわ、うん、かるまいなどれほどジェシカを傷つけてきたか全く考えが及んでいまい家具だから<笑>お前のたわごとに付き合う気は毛頭ない僕を嘲笑うためだけに姿を現したというのかうぬぼれるな家具貴様ごとき嘲笑うにも足りぬわ<笑>しかしそなたも一人ではそれに値しなくても二人揃えば十分に足りる若々しき男女の悲運を笑う喜びは何度繰り返しても飽きぬのでな何だとままさか貴様お嬢様を第二の晩の生贄にえに寄り添う二人が必要なのでなお前たち二人は実に都合がよいま待て勘違いするな僕はお嬢様とそういう関係じゃない第二の番の生贄にはならない<笑>だからお前はジェシカを傷つけるだからお前は人間になれぬならばよいだろう貴様がジェシカを思い人と認めぬならばそれを受け入れてもよいだがジェシカは殺すなぜこのバカが決まっておろうが殺したらそなたが歪めるだろうその表情が楽しいからのほかに何の理由が必要なのか儀式に従いわらわは気まぐれに十三人を生贄にえとするだがそれ以上殺してはならないとの決まりはないわらわが楽しければ幾人でも殺すだから殺すわらわを思いっきり笑わせてみせろよカーグカードーアダタイムカノン definitely heard Jessica's scream. The instant he blinked and looked down the corridor, the witch who had been there making a perfectly ordinary face until a second ago had disappeared. Yeah, I guess those faces are ordinary for bad teachers. <laughs> right now, it was just him standing alone in the corridor. And the person he wanted to protect was asking for help and was right over there. It was obvious what he should do. It wasn't logical, it was an electric reaction. Ordinary face, yeah. <laughs> Without a trace of hesitation or idle thoughts, the person he wanted to protect was there and asking for help. So, in that moment, he generally felt that he wanted to be the person who was there with her. Oh god. When he flew into Jessica's room, his eyes latched on a, onto a bizarre scene. The room was a fantastical world where a blizzard of golden powder danced, almost as though gold leaf had been scattered inside the snow globe. No, that's not it. I've seen this spectacle before. This isn't gold leaf. It's countless gold butterflies, Beatrice's minions. Jessica was surrounded by countless butterflies and was waving her hands around, trying frantically to bat them away. <laughs> Kanon rushed towards Jessica and violently brushed the group of butterflies away. The butterflies, beautiful yet filthy, surrounded Jessica's face, trying to crawl in through her mouth and nose. Wow! Ugh! Jessica gagged violently, almost as though the butterflies were triggering her asthma attacks, sneering at her. 
Indeed, when Kanon ran towards Jessica as she choked, the butterflies stopped attacking her and this time, they began to ele elegantly dance a rondo around the two. As he guarded Jessica in pain and using her inhaler, Kanon yelled into the empty air. When he did, the empty air definitely laughed back, satisfied. Then she showed herself. It wasn't a response to Kanon's demand. Oh wow, this is so creepy. And she's back in her dress. It was obviously because appearing and sneering humiliated them even more, and it was more fun. <laughs> Duck with green onions? What? Wait, I wanna know that. What is it? Uh, okay... Duck and onions. Duck and green onions are the primary ingredients for a duck stew. And this gave rise to the Japanese phrase, a duck comes bearing green onions, in which a duck approaches carrying its own seasoning, ready to be eaten. Oh god, okay. Is this the inspiration for that Pokemon? I forget its name. Farfetched. <laughs> That's his name. This metaphorically refers to a situation where a series of uh, lucky uh, coincidences benefits you without any effort. Huh. Or alternatively, where a naive person brings you what you want while unaware of the disadvantage to themselves. Perhaps because of this, a mark or a sucker in terms of scams is often called a duck in Japanese. Oh wow, that's... Okay. Because they're together, so she can separate the two who are close. Is that it? Oh <laughs> No, sorry, I... <laughs> I pressed too quickly, but that's fine. Uh, she snapped her fingers and there was a piercing sound. When she did, the blizzard of gold butterflies started up and they began to form a small mountain as they whirled around in a circle. Just like a cold, wintry wind swirls and creates a mountain of leaves. Well, that mound of gold... I'm trying to realize what I'm looking at. <laughs> From that mound of gold, a hand sprouted and it appeared as though a resident of the world below was crawling out. <laughs> Jessica couldn't comprehend what she was seeing right now and her mouth kept flapping open and closed. It was a little attempt to take in and digest knowledge to understand the incomprehensible. That witch was crawling up was probably an attendant serving the witch. Goatkun, okay. It appeared to be wearing a uniform following the pattern of those who serve. But its face was different. It was strange looking. It was covered with pitch black hair, it breathed rotten breath, and its eyes were filled with the same strange subterranean glow as lava. And the symbol of those who are not human, a pair of horns, it was the figure of a goat-faced attendant who served the witch. <gasps> okay. Jessica could no longer decide what to say. All this happening in front of her couldn't be explained with this world's common sense and she couldn't do anything except open and close her mouth. 
Jessica had noticed that this island had already been cut off from the rules of this world. But even so, she could understand that this goat attendant was the witch's familiar, and it was after her life. And it seemed that the witch had already ordered that. And she faced Canon with an expectant gaze. She faced him with a provocative gaze filled with expectations, as though asking him how he planned to protect this maiden. The attendant had looked especially like a beast when it had been crawling up, but in its composure, you could see that it had more than enough dignity to be worthy of serving the Golden Witch. And you could tell that it was overflowing with the joy of furniture wanting to meet its master's expectations. I thought furniture had no joy. The goat attendant made a gesture that seemed to be a silent vow. Was it in response to its master or was it offered to the opposing canon? There on the attendant's hand, a blade of wicked malice appeared. Jessica had been unable to understand what was happening in front of her for a while now. All she understood was that this thing was gleaming for the purpose of threatening her own life. And right now, that was enough. Kanon spoke quietly to Jessica, who was hiding behind his back. <笑>姫君はおとなしく騎士殿の背中に隠れているがいい自らの命を男に守らせる醍醐味でも存分に味わえばよいさあカノンお前の刃を見せてみよう <笑> うん、美しい。金蔵は家具を生み出すことに関してだけは、わらわの足元に及ぶやもしれぬ。こんなもの、バラの手入れにも使えない。カノン君、それは見せたくなかった。よくぞ抜いたぞ。思いを寄せる女の前で己が人間以下の存在であることをさらした気分は黙れ憤怒で己を焦がしているくせに冷静を装うかなるほど真に熱き炎は青く静かだという今のそなたがそうだというのか僕の力で<笑> お前を殺すことなどできるわけもないお前は月石粒で投げたとて月を砕くことなどできるわけもないだがお前は権限するために水面にその姿を映す水面に石粒を投じれば一時月を乱すこともできるかもしれないしかし月を砕くことなどいら
来い魔女の家具め元来た地獄へ叩き落としてやる<笑>うわっ頼むくん A strand of red remained on Cannon's cheek. Oh, sorry. Oopsies. Just wrong button. My bad. The witch saw this and grinned broadly. That mean <laughs> the trail drawn by the goat attendant's blade drew a large arc in empty space. Cannon wasn't there. He was behind it. Sakini Kaide Aruji no Kaide o Matsai. If this battle of drawing sparkling trails was chess, then Cannon coming from behind was check. And press and press and press and press. And mate in seven. Had the goat attendant not been given the right to go into death throes, and its knees buckled and it fell as its knees buckled and it fell over, it crumbled softly into a bunch of gold butterflies. So there was no sound of it hitting the ground. Even those who couldn't understand this battle could definitely at least realize that Karun had been magnificent. Oh yeah! Oh yeah, I'm realizing that. I... yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh! <laughs> I mean, uh, Karon is always making these like stands. And, like he's been like, "Fuck this! I'm, I'm going after you, Beatrice. This is the second time around. I'm really liking him in these moments. Very, very much approved from my side. Just it would be nice if he didn't have to die." Karon's blade sliced diagonally through the witch's form like a hot knife through butter, and in that instant she burst into gold and scattered. She scattered into several thousand gold butterflies, and for just an instant, the room was filled with the color of twilight. It was just as Kanon himself had said. Attempting to slice Beatrice was just the same as slicing the surface of the water where the moon was reflected. The witch's form was there, with an ordinary expression on her face, as though she had been there the whole time, behind Kanon. <laughs>十分 He's not a duck either. <laughs> Which kind of like goes well with the the duck with the green onions that we <laughs> that we read earlier with that expression because he's not that either. Oh. No. 
理由なんかいらないカノン君はカノン君だようん本当の名前は別にあるけれどそれでも名前は家具じゃないカノン君にはカノン君の生き方があるそれはとても高潔なもので自らが決めるもの家具だから意見しちゃいけないとか家具だから自分の人生を持っちゃいけないとかそんなのないよお嬢様あいつを挑発してはいけませんうんはっきり言っておくぜカノン君は家具じゃない人間だよどうしてカノン君は自分の意思で私を助けに駆けつけてくれたそして恐ろしい魔女であるあんたの前に立ちはだかってくれた私を見捨てることなんていくらでもできただろうにそうしなかった自己犠牲は人間だけが持つ高潔な精神だだからカノン君は人間なんだだから訂正しろカノン君をカグだなんて呼ぶな二度お嬢様うんカタルな人間がとっとと終わらせよう何しろまだまだ第二の番互いの尊厳を認め合う寄り添いし二人を今こそ生贄にえに捧げよさあさあおいでなさい罪を許しなさい煉獄の七食いが一つ色欲グリッチサマンド・ハー・オン・フォーニチュー・ウィッド・アミクシュー・オフ・ラフター・アン・アングー・オン・ハー・フェイス色欲のアスモデウスここに茶番は飽きた第二の番を速やかに遂行せよわらわに瞬きを三つも許すな Are you telling me that she's not committing her own murders and she's having her minions do it? Is this what I'm supposed to gather here? Ugh <sighs> She looks like she has a cool outfit. I would love to see her top to bottom, but. Another weirdo showing up, yes. <laughs> That's a perfect summary of the situation.、Uh, biggest Goda fan. Ah,、oh, okay. It took Anon less than an instant to understand. That goat face from a second ago had been nothing more than a pawn to the witch. However, there was a marked difference in the value of this piece of this furniture that had been newly summoned. できないノロマのくせに生きがって行くわよ。Alright <笑>。ねえねえ、どこがいい？どこを貫いてほしい？お答えなさいよ、可愛い,い子。あなたの好きなところ。Okay, so I don't like her. I'm sorry. <laughs> She's talking like this to Kanon. No, 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 no. I will not stand for it. Canon's bag had been the target, but Jessica had predicted it. 
She had predicted that the sneering witch's target would be the complete opposite of fair and honest. His back. But she had no way to block it. She had no aspirations to martyr them. She simply thought that there was no way other than this to protect Kanon's back. So she could do nothing but block it with her own back. The furniture of the witch, which had changed its form into a demon's stake, was stuck deep into Jessica's back. It was an obviously fatal wound that reached as far as her lungs. When she saw this, the witch let out a loud evil laugh. Because it had hit where the witch had predicted. Everything, everything was as the witch had predicted. No, そう、<笑> ふんだの そしてそれを<笑> There was no way to block it. The sound of a woodpecker filled the entire room and before he could blink it was already right in the center of his chest. When you take a piece in chess, it's impossible by the rules of your opponent's piece to defend. So this was an obvious result, and one even specified by the rules. Kanon landed on his knees, and he apologized. Not to the witch, and not to Milady. He apologized to Jessica. Cannon's chest is defenseless, yeah. That, is that a, a real thing that happened? What? <laughs> hey, Coach Vixie, how are you? He was really cool. Canon finally fell over. He landed next to Jessica, and the two lay there like Gemini. <laughs> From a side story. Okay, interesting. interesting. Fifty-sixty characters. Okay. Hey, that's a lot.
In his last moments, Kanon wanted to tell her his real name. But Jessica had already fallen into a sleep from which she would never wake. So Kanon's real name, which he had protected until today, in the end he couldn't tell it to Jessica. Book Ingen. Those were the last words Canon left behind. <laughs> yeah, 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 we get it. Wadawaseru da kagu ga! Hyakunen o heyo to kagu wa kagu steru toki ni kagu no tame ni boketsu o horu baka ga doko ni iru. Kagu wa tataki wa te maki ni ste. Ato ni wa hai shika nukuranu wa. So you go to you. Kagu ni kizameru bohi nado nai. Kisama wa shineba kore ijou no kutsujoku o ukeru koto ga nai to shinjite ru yo da ga. Sore wa amai zo. Shisha o hazukashimeru to yu no ga dou yu mono ka. After taking a puff from her pipe, the witch breathed the smoke at Kanon's corpse. When she did, Kanon's corpse softly floated up into the air and disappeared as though it had been eaten by a moth in empty space. The witch played dirty until the very end. The two who had understood one another in their last moments, she would not even permit their corpses to be close. If someone had been watching, they would probably mourn that this was indeed a disgrace to the dead. However, Beatrice was far, far cooler. That would become immediately apparent. Wait. Did the clock just go back? It went back. Okay. So yeah, we're back with Kinzo. Okay, it's it's yeah, yeah. It's, sorry, sorry, not load, but uh, save. There we go. Yeah, yeah. The, that is my limit for tonight. <laughs> that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It is. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, thank you as well for coming around and uh, joining me. I am a little bit. <laughs> I'm uh, not feeling so great after that. So I will need time to recover until next time. Yeah, that was... My heart is broken. Uh, what can I say? Oof. There we go. Thank you for the pet pets. You're not really a fan of Beto thus far, huh? What would I be a fan of? So far. Can you list me one thing that I should be a fan of? Because I I can't find any. <laughs> like, sorry to, to bear in chat. I respect, obviously, your choice of favorite characters and so on. I don't want to disrespect it in any way. But, like, so far, funny laugh. Oh, my God. It's a little bit over the top for me. <clears throat> but, um, yeah. I'm still not entirely sure what this episode is supposed to be doing for the story um, and what all of these alternate kinds of events mean. So I'm just hanging in there and like taking everything one by one. Uh, she got impeccable style though and sense of humor, yes. Right, but the others have impeccable style too. Like I personally very much like, uh, for example, Kiria's in Shannon's outfits. And I think I like them more than bad. Bears, bad teachers, sorry. Um, but yeah, although I do recognize her style as well, I you know, I said it at the time. You're entering the weirder parts of Fumineko, enjoy. Oh, great! Mm -hmm. Goat equals best character. <laughs> yeah, well, we didn't really see that much of him, uh, there. He didn't express any sort of personality or anything thus far, he was just doing bad to just bidding which is actually something that 
kind of has me surprised. I, again, I don't know what exactly this is supposed to mean in the grand scheme of things that we're seeing these things. I think this is basically the first murder that we fully, fully witnessed, I guess. Right? Except maybe for um, Cannon's death uh, the last time when it was... Um, mm, at least we saw his perspective, right? That we didn't see the, the other side of whoever uh, murdered him. Uh, but I think this is like the first time we actually see stuff in full swing from both sides. Um, and yeah, I'm not entirely, entirely sure what this is supposed to mean in terms of uh, deciphering the mysteries. So I'm just taking it as it is so far, but I... Uh, I don't feel super comfortable saying it already because I haven't seen everything, but so far, okay, I can like limit it to so far. Um, yeah, Canon, Canon is my guy. I, I really, really like him. I think I like him the most so far out of all the characters. So that's a lot to say. And he's been nothing but stellar in both, both episodes. Canon, yes. But my heart breaks. Oh. He keeps getting the short end of the stick all the time. The ma main mystery is what's going on for Fasik. Yes, yes. <laughs> Pretty much, yes, yes. Giga Chad, yes. Yes, he is. I love him. I love him. And I love his voice, uh, voice acting. Quite a lot. I think that contributes a lot to the character because it adds so much depth to everything that he says. And you can kind of like, at least I feel it in the depths of my soul, like where he's coming from with the things that he's saying. He's so cool. Me like. I mean, at least I get to experience him being super epic before he dies. What if his real name is stupid? I don't care. It doesn't matter. I don't know if it will affect me that much because, okay, you can tell me that the name is this and that it means this thing in Japanese, but it would still not feel stupid to me because it's not ingrained in my mind, right? That it means that, that thing. Yeah. Good night, Chidarin. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you, thank you. Oh. Who would name their kid stupid? <laughs> Also, yeah, interpreting it in the sense of uh, it actually being the word stupid. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I It, it doesn't even matter um, what the character is named. He's uh, dad jokes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no problem. No problem. He is so much larger than a name, so... Cheers to Kano. Finishing up my tea in his honor. Yeah. All right. Yeah. This has been quite quite something. Ugh. I'm gonna need some time to recover. So it's it's perfect that it came at the end of the stream because I don't know. I I don't think I would have had power to process anything coming after that. Um. You need to raise a chair to him, not a cup. <laughs> Oh god, no, 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 a cup is fine, that's what I have right now, <laughs> because French. Uh, but at least at the very end, he, he uh, like, accepted and embraced not actually being furniture. And actually, he, how do I put it, he was forcing the idea onto himself before. I don't think he fully, fully believed it, but he believed that he should believe it. And so he kind of forced himself into it, but just the fact that there was something inside of him wanting to be human, wanting to experience these human things, that already, just by that feeling existing, and that by that part of him manifesting, that already made him not furniture. But he needed to realize that for himself. So he did it a bit late, but he did it nonetheless. And... Um, 
whatever bad that you did at the end there, like it doesn't it doesn't even matter. Because um it's kinda like an extension of the idea that uh uh we were like kinda or at least I was saying but I think Shannon was kinda implying it as well earlier uh, that it doesn't matter what actually happens afterwards as long as you have that moment when you are so connected with the person you care about and you share that moment together and it matters to you both no matter how short-lived it might be no matter how and here was like i don't know a couple of seconds not even a minute whatever um but yeah no matter how short-lived you had that and so you kind of had like you made your own eternity happen and whatever else happens out the external factors that like have nothing to do with the two of you it just doesn't matter so at least there's that i i fully believe in that and i also like whatever bet that you did there, there in the end and like not allowing them to be together in death it's like it doesn't matter they're together in spirit and she cannot break that so that's my takeaway and on that note I will say goodnight. I definitely need a really good rest <laughs> after this. Jesus. Based and love piled. Yes. Yes. Very much. Couldn't have said it better. <laughs> yeah. Thanks so much for joining. <laughs> I appreciate you all being being present and uh, and chatting and yeah. Uh, improving this uh, experience of Fumineko to the absolute max because you are amazing and yeah we will continue with this on Thursday again sorry for killing Kanon <laughs> it's okay Bea I know you're not actually the character in the novel like you are your own person that's why I'm trying like when I use names to kind of like differentiate just to not because in, there is any confusion in my mind but just to make sure that I am accurately expressing myself and delining del and delimiting like here i'm referring to you and here i'm actually referring just to the character so i sometimes find myself saying bear referring to the character but that's not what i mean i'm like the character right it's, it's not you that's okay all right take care see you thursday love you all